Hey everybody, welcome out here to the Modern Farmhouse. Guess what we get to talk about today? We get to talk about some beautiful windows. We have those Schuylkill windows. If you saw in the previous video, we talked about their performance, window schedule, all of that, how we get them out to the job site. Today, we're gonna to talk about just a little bit of tips and tricks on how we get these windows installed and how they install, all right? So we have this window here. This is a Shuko, it's an aluminum framed window. It's a triple glaze glazing package, U value of, depending on whether it's an operable or fixed unit, they run from about 0.10 to 0.13. So they fall in that R7 and a half-ish range if you convert that to R value. Um, like I said, they're aluminum, but have no fear, they're thermally broken inside there. The operable sashes are triple gasketed and we can, uh, when we get back to the office, I have a nice corner section where we dissect and we can get into what happens inside the actual window frame. But a couple things I wanted to show you. How do you install these? Obviously, these are what we call a flangeless window because there's no nailing flange here. There's no series of nails to nail this in. Now, some of you that deal with flangeless windows regularly would say, wow, that thing is very prone to water leakage or how do you make that watertight it's it really isn't that hard of a problem and one of the beauties of the flangeless window is because I, the flange dictates where the window goes the flangeless window i have the opportunity to put that anywhere in the wall that i want to put it in so if i'm looking for a deeper pocket aesthetic i can move the window deeper in if i'm looking for a very modern contemporary aesthetic i can move that window out and make it flush with the outside of the framing. That's pretty much what we've done here. Well, let's talk about how we install these. There's basically two types of windows. There's operable and fixed. The uh, fixed speaks for itself. The operables are tilt turn and we have access to the inside of the frame. So when they go to get ready to install these, whether they're fixed or operable, we typically start out with just basically these inst installation clips here. And what these do is, they basically just fit right in this pre-manufactured groove and then you rotate them down and put them into place. And then you simply bend them in to install the window. And then once the window's installed, you can bend these back out and secure it. And we just happen to have a window here right behind me where one is installed. So you can see here, we have our four installation clips and you might sit there and say, well, that's four, but in, this isn't that big of a window compared to some of the ones we have in this house, but that's still quite not enough. So while they have the window in, and this one we actually already have our air seal in, but when they install these, they basically lock them in place with these bladder bags. They, these slide in between the window and the frame. They pump them up and the bladder bags give you the opportunity to center the window in the opening and get it right where you want it to be, lock it in place, then you get to screw it off with those metal clips. Now, the way we finish off the window is, we then come in, we open it on the turn function, and we use what's called a turbo screw. So a turbo screw is manufactured by the window company, or they source them and they send them with the windows. But the beauty of the turbo screw is that because it's fully threaded, it never pulls on the window. So there's pre-manufactured holes that you can see here. And you can see after we put the clips in, we then come back in the, the pre-drilled holes and we simply install the turbo screws. Now with the combination of the metal clips, the turbo screws and the jams in the head, obviously there's no turbo screws in the sill here. We don't want to put any holes down there for water management reasons but uh, they go around the frame. You can see them up there. And then we have nice little plastic caps that go over that to match the jet black finish. But there you have it. Metal clips, turbo screws, plumb square level. A lifetime of venting in the tilt option. And that's how it's done. Let's jump back. We'll go over to the drafting table and we'll talk about how some of these details get developed to get to this level of installation. Hey everybody, welcome to the build show. Hope you enjoyed that trip out there on the site. Shuko makes some absolutely beautiful windows. 
those triple glaze thermally broken aluminum windows man they are hard to beat but uh anyways we're back at the studio here now keep in mind windows right i can i could probably do no less than about a 24 hour video on uh, window install but we need to break it down into some fundamental pieces and uh you know kind of grasp some general concepts so today we're going to do just that got my good friend big red here and we have a surprise guest that's going to join us a little later but uh right now let's take a look at the detail so i printed out just the sill detail here so you can see here is the window frame You can see here, this is the triple glazed IGU. IGU stands for insulated glazing unit. That frame is thermally broken. You can see kind of the, the guts in here where basically this aluminum frame on the inside and this aluminum frame on the outside do not touch. So that's the idea of thermally broken is that you don't get that conductive aluminum passing through the whole system. So you basically have an inner frame and an outer frame, and then you have a bu whole bunch of stuff in the middle that doesn't conduct the uh, the heat there. So, so we have our window installed. You can see here, this is our wall frame, right? So there's our wall frame. There's our double sill. If you haven't seen the video where I talk about framing, I suggest you go back and check it out. Great video, basics on uh, wall framing. Now, obviously these are what we term <clears throat> flangeless windows. So flangeless windows give us the opportunity to basically put this anywhere in the wall. So as a designer, I have to design um, where I wanna put that wall window. So I can put it a lot of places. I, the more I move it to the inside, the more my flashing becomes complicated. The more I move that window to the outside, the more I create this cavity inside here and I put the windows in a cooler spot. So any building scientist would tell you that if you have this distance to place the window in, the window wants to get placed somewhere in the middle third. And there you go, there you have it. Guess where we put it? The middle third. And that works the best thermally. It works really good for water management. I like to understand that, hey, here's my sheathing with weather resistive barrier. So this is my Alamo, if you will, on water, bulk water control. It's back here. So I like to kind of put the window in alignment with that. Now that just happens to be my air control layer too. So if you're not familiar with control layers, first video I did, we talked about control layers. We talked about how to make appropriate decisions. We talked about their uh, priority, water number one, air number two. We're gonna talk about those. So getting that in alignment, that always seems to work the best for me. It's, uh, I've detailed literally hundreds of windows and it always seems to work best when we do that. So anyways, my rule of thumb. You can see here, the window has this little hook thing that comes out. Well, what that is, is notice how everything is kind of um, moving in that direction. Well, that's if any water migrates into the system here, that is a weep system that lets water out of the window frame. So the window unit itself in this case has a bulk water management system. So that water in, there is a place for guess what? water to go down and out. And it just so happens that we ensure that we detail the windowsill just below that weep so the water would drop onto the windowsill, go out the windowsill, come down the windowsill, even if it tried to turn the corner, guess what? We have that nice drip there and we force the water to drop. So, windows got a water management system. We take it where the window delivers that water and we turn it into a water management system on the outside. But what if water does get in here? What if we're able to get some wind-driven rain? And as Brian from Howell Custom Building will tell you, the rain up there near the ocean has the potential to be horizontal rain, um, meaning it's very high wind and the rain comes in at a pretty shallow angle. So if water does get in that system, how do we battle it? Well, 
The first thing I do is I create what's called a back dam. Basically, I need something to physically stop the water. But if I just put a wooden block there, like I've shown, then water can kind of get in all the nooks and crannies. But I need that direction down and out, right? It's, it's building science, not rocket science. So what do I do? Well, I create a membrane. Well, I don't create a membrane. I install a membrane that goes out, down, across the end dam, down and out over the sheathing. So any water that gets into my system, there's a slope piece of wood here. So we have basically a five degree angle roughly there. So that's the down and out portion. So any water that migrates into my system, well, it hits that slope and guess what? It's forced into here. Well, what is this space? That is my rain screen space. So we have the ability for that bulk water to migrate down and drip out the bottom of the wall. When it drips out the bottom of the wall, there's sloped ground, it takes it away, down and out. It's building science, not rocket science. Um, our weather barrier is back here and our Alamo, if you will. So the joints on the foam here, the rigid foam, we're not treating. So if there was any water that migrated in here, it doesn't matter because that is our Alamo. And this foam is hydrophobic, meaning that you could submerge it in water. Um, it's an EPS type nine foam. So it's rated for underground ground contact. It's widely used as concrete filler under runways, under highways in um, below grade situations. So a little bit of water. I mean, you can imagine when it rains here, Right, a large portion of the water runs out, drips, comes down our siding, and moves down the wall, down the window, down the sill, drips, and does its thing. The amount of water that gets in here is a really small percentage, but because that water is gonna happen usually because it's being driven in, well, what do we need to make a leak? We need a hole, we need water, we need a force. Well. We have water, rain, we have a potential little hole because things are open here, and we have a force. We have, in this case here, it could be a 50 mile an hour wind hitting the side of this building, 60 mile an hour wind in a really good rainstorm for a while, driving that water into the system. So we need some type of pressure relief in here, rain screen system, where we allow that water to just fall outside of our water management system. And you can see we have that uh, barrier there and then we have the uh, Alamo there, which is our uh, weather resistant barrier. So, so that's basically the dynamics of water management against these windows. Let's take a look here. I'm just gonna throw a clean sheet on here. And I told you we had a special guest. Well, Big Red has got a cousin, Big Blue. So, Big Blue is out today. Big Blue is going to help us understand a little bit about air, right? So, we talked about a air or a uh, water leak, we, pressure difference, a hole, and water. Well, if we put water, we can't really get rid of that without, because Mother Nature doesn't have an off button. So, she's going to deliver the rain. We can not eliminate necessarily the pressure difference because we can't eliminate mother nature with the wind. So what are we left to do? Not provide the hole, right? And the pressure difference, it gets a little complicated in that we don't want to have any open joints inside where we can have that pressure difference to force the water in. So what are we doing? We talked about the window frame earlier. Before we get put on all this cosmetic stuff, we run a piece of tape that goes right over the top. Now that just connects to that piece of flashing that goes back to the end dam and goes in there. On the inside, we have another piece of tape. Now, it just so happens for this project, um, our good friends at SEGA have provided those tapes and this one on the outside here is more vapor open than the one on the inside. That would be to suggest if water by some means did get in here, it would have the ability to dry out through that permeable tape a lot easier than migrating in through this impermeable tape. So, and you can see here where 
we ask for a little bit of foam sealant and that goes around all four sides of the window. And so that takes care of the air sealing of the window. So we basically have our wall. You can see we have some sealant here and that basically takes our sheathing and weather resistive barrier which got folded in here. We have our blocking here which gets sealed to that. And then we have our window frame and the blocking or the um, ice and water, not the ice and water shield, but the uh, flashing membrane there. And that gets sealed to the window. So we maintain that continuity through the system and then the windows get attached to the glass and the glass becomes our air barrier there. But because we provide the tape, the sealant and the tape on the inside, we don't really provide that pressure difference that the leak needs to go through the wall system. We don't allow it to move through there. So any water that does come in here is forced to follow this system and drip out. So there you have it. We talked a little bit about water management. We talked a little bit about air leakage, how these systems work. Um, you know, keep in mind, notice on the rain screen system, part of making this somewhat equalized to the pressure outside, we don't caulk this joint. We just leave that open and we let a little bit of air migrate in there. So it's kind of like if you took a uh, can of a liquid and you poke a hole in the bottom. Well, if I don't poke a hole in the top, stuff doesn't move out that hole in the bottom. But the minute I poke a hole in the top, that bottom hole is able to run free. Anybody that ever filled up their lawnmower with gas, you know, you got to pop that little lid and let the gas roam free, right? So anyways, to cap it off, there you go. That's our one of our first windows installed up there. I, I get that this is somewhat fundamental, but we got to make sure we cover all the big bases and then we can start talking about a little bit more in detail on the window jams, the head, and how we deal with all these and maybe look at some other projects with different um, siding systems. So anyways, hope you enjoyed that. Um, there's a bunch of videos, you know, in my series on the Build Show Network. So if you haven't seen those, I suggest go back, watch some of them. You know, we try and put up really good content and uh, try and help out and uh, and share some of the knowledge. Um, along with my content, there's some great colleagues of mine out there, Matt, Jake, Wade, Brent. They're all delivering super stuff. I look forward to watching their videos every week. And uh, anyways, go check it out. You can also find me on Instagram. I post a lot of stuff there. You can find me at Stephen Basic Architect out there. And, uh, you know, check out the Build Show Network. And if you haven't, make sure you get on that Build Show Network and you subscribe to our newsletter. Our newsletter gives you updates on things that are happening, the latest videos, etc. But hit that subscribe button and uh, sign up, share the knowledge, and uh, hopefully you can put some of this to good use. But until next time, long live our buildings.